Whether you are a yummy mummy, a yoga fanatic, a feminist, or frustrated housewife, there will be many nuggets for you to digest and laugh about in Claire Dieterer's social critique memoir, Poser, My Life in 23 Yoga Poses. Claire is a former film critic, longtime contributor to the New York Times and other lauded publications. Poser is her first memoir. It is my pleasure to welcome Claire Dieterer to Studio 4 to tell us more. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. All the way from Bainbridge Island. Yeah, a long, long distance. One of my favorite spots. Yeah, it's beautiful there. It's nice. It's so beautiful there and serene and cool. It seems like it would be <laughs> yoga central. It is yoga central. It's mm -hmm. definitely that kind of yoga liberal bubble that um, I seem to be attracted to. And when did the pigeon or the downward dog or one of those poses bite you? Well, I started doing yoga when I had just had my first child, and she was just this really, really enormous baby. And she was sort of squashing me, and my back went out. And so where I lived at the time in North Seattle, if your back went out, there's only one answer. You do yoga. So that was when I first started doing mm -hmm. yoga, was because of a bad back, which I think is, you know, a very common of thing course. to do. Yeah. Well, I'm sure when uh, Swami Vivekananda uh, <laughs> brought yoga to North America, he didn't know there'd be lots of yummy mummies and others. Big, small, fat, have. short, doing hip hop yoga and hot mm -hmm. yoga and upside down yoga. Uh, 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 Deepak Chopra was just here and he's just started the first Chopra yoga center oh, in North okay. America, yeah. in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the explosion of it's been really amazing. And um, that was one of the reasons I really wanted to write this book was I felt like I knew so many people who were doing yoga of all different kinds of people, like you're saying, and yet I wasn't seeing a yoga book that really reflected those people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a book reviewer and a, and a journalist, and I would review these books for Yoga Journal, and they would sort of be full of paths and intentions and destinies, and, <laughs> right. and I would just think, nobody I know who does yoga talks like that. Mm -hmm. And what if you could write about yoga in a way that, you know, is act actually reflects real sure. experience. Sure, and you talk uh, clearly about your first class. <laughs> uh, you know, the, uh, let the eye rolling begin, you say. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, my first class, of course, so when the book opens, I'm this sort of overachieving um, mom, new mom, who's trying to do everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I have to go to the, you know, sort of coolest yoga class in Seattle, which, as you can imagine, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I go in and there's just this terrifying uber blonde teacher trying to get me to get into these twisty poses and mm -hmm. I just remember this feeling of total deflation like I will never be able to do this just crumpled up right and the yoga show-offs too, them oh my lord the ones who do everything they make a perfect eagle yeah exactly a, and they have the perfectly glossy ponytails mm -hmm. like their ponytails are all business and they're all mm -hmm. the serene gaze into the middle distance I know in and, the Lululemon in and the, the perfect Lululemon. outfits yes. and uh, my first yoga class I know I was in the old t-shirt and I thought oh yeah, it, it kind of, and the T-shirt comes over your head. You go, that's not right. Good. Like that doesn't what if, work. What if I have to do the headstand or something like that? Right. But Nobody wants to see the midsection. <laughs> no. But you talk about uh, the super mummies, really, mm -hmm. yeah. and the pressure mm -hmm. to be super mummy. Organic baby food, uh, the right pram, the right this, the right. right that. Sleeping with your child. You know, having no plastic toys. Everything. You know, you're mm -hmm. supposed to work, but you're supposed to be with your kid all the time. There's just this amazing set of rules that you're supposed to be living by and you know I I'm a child of the 70s I grew up thinking I could do anything and mm -hmm. be whatever I wanted to be and yet when I became a mom all of a sudden there were all these rules of the right way to do things yes. and they were very groovy rules but they were rules nonetheless and I looked around and I thought that's really interesting mm -hmm. you know I can the see pressure. this happening to all these women mm -hmm. and so I really wanted to kind of get down on paper that experience that I was seeing all around me but that wasn't being talked sure. about. Sure, and you talk about uh, people like my mom or my dad, the dads were working, the moms are home smoking. <laughs> <laughs> your brother was in the woods, maybe your right. brother was in the woods or in the tree house uh, yeah, uh, with absolutely. waterlogged porn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, you found all the good bits. I found yeah. all the good bits. Well, I love that because I could relate because my dad smoked and my mom smoked, but they smoked in the car, but mostly my mother was home and she'd have cookies and do all the mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. My dad worked because no wife of his would work. Right. Outside the home. That's right. Because he could take care of all of us, couldn't he? Right, right. Mm -hmm. But then there was the moment when that all changed, and that's something that I deal with in the book is this idea that around about 1973, there was this whole generation of women who... Um, 
all of a sudden realized that they were supposed to have a bigger life. You yes. know, there was this idea of feminism and liberation. Sure, Friedan, um, right, uh, before uh, that. Gloria Steinem, and especially Steinem. Erica Jong, who was Very writing, so. you know, uh, Fear of Flying was almost perceived as like a prescription of how to leave your husband. Mm -hmm. And um, that was great for single women, but for women who had children, it was a more complicated prospect. Mm. And all of a sudden there was this uh, generation of moms who the rules changed and, and how were they gonna go find freedom you know, with these mm -hmm. little kids alongside yes. them. And so that was the sort of cohort I grew up in. And um, I thought a lot about how our mom's pursuit of freedom affected us as moms and I think it made us controlling and rule bound mm -hmm. and sort of uptight. Um, I think we tried to do everything right because our moms had had sort of created this sure. instability in our childhood. True, but there was also the point that if your child went to daycare he'd be ruined for life. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. like you're not home with your child, it was a big deal. Right. And yeah. there was many, many talk shows on uh, can a child grow up and survive with a working mother and a working father. But uh, don't you think it's interesting that that debate still continues? Still I mean, does. It's still something that mm -hmm. people are talking about and, and it's always about whether or not the mom works, right. not about if the dad I works. I know, but now they're saying actually kids are, are more involved and better, right. better you know, socialized. It, it, you know, with their peer, if they grew up with their peers, peers have bigger influence than mom and pa. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about quality <gasps> time, oh, no. I know, not quantity <laughs> time. To the and horror of all those. Of those course, things. of course. But yoga can be a safe place when you're going through all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. And one thing I used to think about when I first started doing yoga was not only was it a safe place, not only was it exercise, not only was it serene, but I would always think about how it was a room I would never have to clean. That too. So there was this feeling that you were in this place that was a total refuge. Mm -hmm. Overeducated liberal mommies. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and this sort of feeling that you were continuing with this sort of goodness project when you were mm -hmm. at yoga. You weren't just exercising, you were somehow becoming better maybe mm -hmm. better than everyone else. Well, it is a magnificent practice and I it don't is. do it very well, not nearly as well as you do. Mm.